Hello, this is R.J. Deacon reading the Supreme Court of the United States opinion syllabus in Dawson v. Steger, West Virginia State Tax Commissioner, certiori to the Supreme Court of Appeals of West Virginia, argued December 3rd, 2018, decided February 20th, 2019. After Petitioner James Dawson retired from the U.S. Marshals Service, his home state of West Virginia taxed his federal pension benefits as it does all former federal employees. The pension benefits of certain former state and local law enforcement employees, however, are exempt from state taxation. See West Virginia Code 11-21-12C6. Mr. Dawson sued, alleging that the state statute violates the Intergovernmental Tax Immunity Doctrine as codified at 4 U.S.C., Section 111. Under that statute, the United States consents to state taxation of the pay or compensation of federal employees, but only if the state tax does not discriminate on the basis of the source of the pay or compensation. A West Virginia trial court found no significant differences between Mr. Dawson's job duties as a federal marshal and those of state and local law enforcement officers exempted from taxation and held that the state statute violates Section 111's anti-discrimination provision. Reversing, the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals emphasized that the state tax exemption applies only to a narrow class of state retirees and was never intended to discriminate against former federal marshals. The Supreme Court held, reversed, the West Virginia statute unlawfully discriminates against Mr. Dawson as a as Section 111 forbids. A state violates Section 111 when it treats retired state employees more favorably than retired federal employees, and no significant differences between the two classes justify the differential treatment. Davis v. Michigan Department of Treasury. Here, West Virginia expressly affords state law enforcement retirees a tax benefit that federal retirees cannot receive, and there are no significant differences between Mr. Dawson's former job responsibilities and those of the tax-exempt state law enforcement retirees. The narrow preference should be permitted, the state argues, because it affects too few people to meaningfully interfere with federal government operations. Section 111, however, disallows any state tax that discriminates against a federal officer or employee, not just those that seem especially cumbersome. And in Davis, the court refused a similar invitation to add unwritten qualifications to Section 111. That is not to say that the narrowness of a state's tax exemption is irrelevant. If a state exempts only a narrow subset of state retirees, it can comply with Section 111 by exempting only the comparable class of federal retirees. The state also argues that the statute is not intended to harm federal retirees, but to help certain state retirees. The state's interest in adopting the discriminatory tax, however, is simply irrelevant. Davis. For reasons other than job responsibilities, the state insists retired U.S. Marshals and tax-exempt state law enforcement retirees are not similarly situated. But the state statute does not draw any such lines. It singles out for preferential treatment retirement plans associated with particular state law enforcement officers. The distinguishing characteristic of the retirement plans is the nature of the jobs previously held by retirees who may participate in them. The state trial court found no significant differences between Mr. Dawson's former job responsibilities as a U.S. Marshal and those of the state law enforcement retirees who qualify for the tax exemption. And the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals did not upset that finding. By submitting that Mr. Dawson's former job responsibilities are also similar to those of other state law enforcement retirees who did not qualify for tax exemption, The state mistakes the nature of the inquiry. The relevant question under Section 111 is not whether federal retirees are similarly situated to state retirees who do not receive a tax break. It is whether they are similarly situated to those who do. Finally, 
The state says the real distinction may not be based on job duties at all, but on the relative generosity of pension benefits. The statute, as enacted, however, does not classify persons or groups on that basis. And an implicit but lawful distinction cannot save and express an unlawful one. The decision is reversed and remanded. Justice Gorsuch delivered the opinion for a unanimous court. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to get a hold of the podcast, we can be reached at rhodesscholar80 at gmail.com. That's R-O-A-D-S and 8-0. Thank you.